Professor Fury, you've just presented a phase one study of antibodies targeting BDCA2. What is new about that approach? Well, before I answer that, let me just give you a little bit of a background about systemic lupus. Mm -hmm. So we've known for decades, and a lot of this research was done by Lars Ronblum and Peggy Crow and others, that the interferon pathway is overly active in patients with systemic lupus. So that meant, naturally, that we should try to develop inhibitors of the type 1 interferon pathway. And in fact, that was done starting maybe about 15 years ago. And it was done, the approach that was taken was with antibodies against interferon alpha. And the results were not that impressive up until recently Cifilimumab, an antibody to alpha interferon, provided some nice clinical results. And then beyond that, anafrolimab, an antibody to the type 1 interferon receptor, provided even more dramatic results. So that reinvigorated our interest in the interferon pathway, and we see this as a, as a possible treatment for, for lupus. So with respect to what I presented, there are a lot of different ways one could interfere with the interferon pathway, that is, inhibit it. The cells that make type 1 interferons are primarily the plasmacytoid dendritic cells. And these are found in abundance in the skin of lupus patients as well as certain other organs. So the approach taken is with an antibody to BDCA2 and that's a protein on plasmacytoid dendritic cells and no other cell types. So it's uniquely expressed on, I'll call it PDCs. When BDCA2 is ligated, BDCA2 is internalized and the plasmacytoid dendritic cell stops making all its pro-inflammatory proteins, the cytokines, the chemokines, and the interferons. So when this antibody binds to BDCA2, this same thing happens. It doesn't kill the PDCs, it just kind of puts the PDCs to sleep for quite a long time, for several months. This antibody also has, the tail of the antibody is called the FC portion of the antibody, and that binds an FC receptor also on plasma cytoid dendritic cells. And the FC receptor is important because it can bind immune complexes circulating in blood, and lupus patients have a lot of circulating immune complexes. And the consequence of having circulating immune com complexes be internalized is that that's another way to activate the plasma cytoid dendritic cell to start making a lot of cytokines and chemokines and interferons. So this antibody, in a way, blocks both FC-dependent and FC-independent processes. Anyway, the net effect is to reduce production of chemokines, cytokines, and interferons. This phase one study was a relatively small study, just 12 patients, but very heavy on biology. A single dose, 20 milligrams per kilogram, of anti-BDCA2 was given to patients with cutaneous lupus. And these patients could come in with acute cutaneous, subacute cutaneous, or chronic cutaneous lupus, and they received the single dose of antibody. And then there was follow-up where we drew a lot of blood samples and we did skin biopsies and then we also assessed their clinical response using an instrument designed just for assessing lupus skin disease called CLASI, C-L-A-S-I. So the, it's a little hard to talk about the data without showing slides, but I'll try to uh, summarize it. So we looked at what happened to the interveron gene signature at different points in time. And in the placebo group, we saw really nothing happen to the four patients who got placebo. But the, most of the patients who got the treatment had a reduction in their interferon gene signature activity. So at least we saw something happening biologically. So that was our pharm one of our pharmacodynamic markers. The next was to look at a pharmacodynamic marker in the skin and that was using MXA. MXA is a protein that acts as a surrogate for interferon pathway activity. And we didn't see much change in the patients who received placebo, but in the skin biopsies from those who got treatment with the antibody, most of the patients had a reduction in their MXA expression. And then we looked at clinical efficacy using the CLASI, and we didn't see much change in the placebo-treated patients one out of four had a response, but that patient also got a lot of steroids in the, in the middle. 
And in the treatment group, six out of eight had a classy response. And classy response was defined as a four point or greater reduction in the total activity score of the classy. So it's a very unique approach to targeting the interferon pathway. And these phase one data, though small numbers of patients, served as a foundation for moving forward into phase two. And there are actually two studies, one looking at cutaneous lupus and the other looking at systemic lupus. So it's a very exciting era right now targeting the interferon pathway. And uh, what are your expectations um, for the future in this area after concluding with the other two studies? We hope success, <laughs> but lupus trials are really hard. I mean, they've been incredibly challenging. We started lupus drug development back in the early 90s, and there have been countless failed trials. But on the bright side, there have been, I consider, five late stage successes four of them with the same drug with Benlista or Belimumab. So we hope for success, but it is very challenging. It's been very humbling trying to do clinical trials in lupus. And what, what are the main challenges in that? Why is it so? Oh, you have uh, a couple hours to talk about that. So the challenges start with clinical trial design, with recruiting the appropriate patients, designing the outcomes, the background medications, so steroids and immunosuppressives can certainly confound our results. So we're still at work trying to perfect the ideal trial design. During the presentation, one question from the audience was whether skin disease has also been classified and uh, you mentioned that so far this has not happened. If skin disease is classified or studied, um, what might that be able to tell us? Well, when we enroll patients into clinical trials, we stratify lupus nephritis versus extra renal lupus studies because the treatments are, are different. Lupus nephritis patients are treated much more vigorously. For the extra renal, you have two choices. You can do organ specific studies or you can do global studies where no matter what the activity of the patient is, as long as they meet a certain entry number on a sleet eye or, or bilag activity, uh, they're in the study. But we don't subdivide into the different types of skin disease, and that can be in lupus, it's a bit simplistic, acute cutaneous, subacute cutaneous, and chronic cutaneous. But none of the studies to date have classified, have stratified into those groups. And I think we need to start to do that because there may be differential mechanisms and differential responses depending what type of skin disease one has. So we are learning lessons from each of these trials and I think what you'll see in the future is not bringing patients in based upon a clinical phenotype but maybe a clinical phenotype coupled with a molecular phenotype. Did you find for yourself any new learnings at the Euler in Madrid or were there any studies that you found particularly interesting of other presenters? Oh, my head is spinning. I had to go home and think about it and look through all of the items that I saw and many of the items that I didn't see. So I'll let you know in a couple of months. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.